For my part, I want to I want to talk about being a founder and how that started, <clears throat> and kind of take you through um, through my eyes as a young man and uh, what I was thinking at the time that uh, that this neo life as we know it today started. So. If we go back to Porterville, California, I'm so happy to have some people here. <laughs> you know, Demon said hello from Porterville, Lindsay, uh, Strathmore, Ducor, Terabella, Cotton Center, don't forget, okay. <laughs> Visalia, okay, and so on. Delano, wow. And then <laughs> yeah, I couldn't think past that because, uh, you, you know, Fresno and Bakersfield, too big, okay, for me. <laughs> Just too many people, too busy, whatever. But anyway, I, uh, I saw the business. You all maybe know the story, you can hear it from others, but my brother Bob and I attended a presentation in Tulare, and uh, we, it was at the, I think it was the uh, center there, there's right near uh, Mooney Boulevard and the road that goes to Strathmore and there's a center there that you can get a free room to have a meeting in so at the time and uh, so <clears throat> we we attended a meeting and uh, I was 19 years old and do you know decided to join and then Bob also I signed Bob up I was a little faster but I <laughs> I'll join and Bob I'll sponsor you okay you know and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wish Bob was here so he could hear me, but, uh, <clears throat> but anyway, uh, then I borrowed the money, $50 from Bob, <laughs> which is not, was not, you know, that's when I, I was surprised Bob loaned me the money because uh, Bob was earning 70 cents an hour uh, as a TV repairman. He was replacing tubes and TVs. You know, you check the tube, and if it, if it was bad, you replace the tube and you repaired the TV, okay? Now you just throw away the TV and get another one. So it's, it's changed. They don't fix them anymore. <clears throat> but anyway, it takes a long time to save up $50 to loan me, and uh, that $50 in today's uh, money would be maybe $400. So that's about what it was, getting $400 from from Bob if he was making, you know, a dollar an hour an hour, or, or $10 an hour rather. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> that's how I started. And uh, so then I, I founded my business. It was a distributorship, right? And you have founded yours. And let me tell you my vision, because I have people, I've had people come up to this convention, this convention and say, wow, what an incredible <clears throat> vision you had. You know, thank you for this vision that you had, uh, you know, as a young person. And, no, I didn't. I didn't, I have to tell you. Uh, my, my vision, <laughs> we'll call it, was when I saw the marketing plan and there's there's a really powerful element of duplication in direct selling uh, in, in our network marketing that you don't ever forget. And that is this duplication of, I can, I can sponsor someone, uh, which I did, and uh, they know somebody that I don't know, and they sponsor that person. I can help them. But then that opens another door uh, for me, and then there's a certain power in that. If you put incentives behind that, uh, then you have a chance for uh, a real powerful explosion of growth. Things have to be right, but it happens. <clears throat> so my vision was uh, I'm going to, uh, I'll, I'll get some people right here in Porterville and this thing could expand out to Lindsay. It's 10 miles away, okay. Strathmore, for well, sure, because that's on the way to Lindsay, halfway. You know, Terabella, the other direction. 
you know, Cotton Center, you know, to Larry I could still think about, and Visalia, that was the big city in my, in my vision. And so that's what I saw. That was enough uh, to motivate me. <laughs> and I then, I didn't think about Los Angeles, San Francisco, another state, anything, because I really didn't want to go there, okay? So this wasn't, so you see my vision was, now as you realize, as you have a vision, a goal, or a series of goals, and you start putting that into reality, as it starts to happen, unfold, you're able to increase your vision. Okay, it, you, it's progressive. You can't think, there's no way I could think about where we are today, it just wasn't, would have been impossible. If someone had even said it to me, probably would have been frightening, I don't know. I, I couldn't see it, I didn't have to see it. So I saw that, you know, within <clears throat> a 30 minute drive, <clears throat> excuse me, of where I was living, uh, uh, still, you know, at home, and uh, then uh, as, as that started to happen, all of a sudden, uh, one of my distributors said, I know somebody in Bakersfield. Well, there I go to Bakersfield. Now I knew Bakersfield a little bit, I wasn't afraid of that because I was selling furniture part-time for a furniture store in Porterville. I was, uh, uh, delivery boy uh, in, you know, in the part of the time, and then I was selling furniture, and I was a low guy on the, on the totem pole, we'll call it. And so there were two more salespeople, and when they had customers, if I wanted to hang around when there were no deliveries to do, if they, if they had customers and a third one came in, I could take the third one, okay? Well, when I got a customer, I really treated it right. And the first thing I try to do is I'd say, look, and I'd go around with, uh, normally the woman comes in to shop and she would look around and I would say, why don't, uh, you know, here's my card. And, uh, <clears throat> and I would have on there, I had Jerry Brassfield, blah, 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 interior designer. <laughs> Self-appointed, okay. <laughs> And I would say, why don't I come, I see what you're, you're wanting here, why don't I bring some samples, I'll come over and I'll look at your living room and we'll have a look and we'll sit down and, and uh, discuss it. And so I'd get them away from the store so the other guys couldn't bother them. And then I would go deal with the customer. That's how I started selling. And so, but that was a step in the direction. So I'd already been to Bakersfield because the owner of Weatherby's Furniture Store Oh, still there, right? Blackstone Boulevard, is it? Is it on? Yeah. Anyway, I, I go down there and they bring me in for the weekends and they'd have these big, big uh, promotions with spotlights and, and people would come from all over the valley and they had, uh, uh, they had uh, uh, country western bands there, Johnny Cash, you know, Merle Haggard, all these people. Uh, we're playing all night long and people are coming in and so I would sell furniture on the weekend, okay? And then my, then my little business that I was the founder of, I would deal with at other times, all right? Now, uh, so, I, but this started to spread and all of a sudden uh, uh, I had distributors in San Diego, okay? Uh, I decided then to move to the Bay Area, San Jose. And then I started to <clears throat> get distributors there. <clears throat> and each, t each move, each move. Now along the way, uh, the first company went bankrupt. Now this is a very traumatic thing, okay? Uh, if, you know, tomorrow's newspaper says Neolife goes bankrupt. Now imagine what you'd be doing and explaining to the people that you've brought in uh, about, well, I'm sorry, you know, I thought, you know, I thought they said no debt, okay. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. 
if you can just put your pl- yourself in that position and, and feel the, the embarrassment and uh, the shame uh, and uh, your, your whole world gets rattled. And at the time that happened, I probably had about 150 people in my team. Uh, so I knew I liked what I was doing, so I looked for another company. Uh, and in fact, my upline sponsors started a, a company called Ad, uh, Admark, Advanced Marketing, okay? That's what it stood for, still the nutritional business. <clears throat> and so I joined and started there. It repeated itself. I, I continued on living in San Jose and building and whatnot, a year and a half later, bankrupt, okay? And so that's about the time that I decided to take what was left of my company that I'd founded, my distributor team, and, and, and by the way, I, I didn't get half of them. You know, some left me the first time and after the second time, my credibility had sunk even lower. Can you imagine? I come back for the third time to tell you this was the real thing, okay? <clears throat> okay. So now my vision had shrunk a little. <laughs> okay, but I managed to, uh, to start a small company and uh, that company then uh, didn't uh, ever uh, fail, <laughs> okay? And, but it was my original founding of my team uh, and my, uh, my distributorship that uh, I carried along the way. And along the way, by the way, at one of those, uh, the company that uh, I, well, actually I, I joined the uh, company, which we later, I later owned uh, in this was called uh, Best Line Products. And uh, that's where I met John Miller. He was a college student working in uh, the warehouse at night, cleaning the warehouse. Yeah. And uh, brilliant, you know, I recognized right away that John was a very smart young guy. And uh, so that relationship uh, continues today. You're gonna hear from John just a little bit later, but. Uh, <clears throat> Now, that's the business part of it. The personal, uh, the, the health issue, uh, very unhealthy, asthma, hay fever, living in the San Joaquin Valley, and uh, just for people that suffer from uh, respiratory problems, it's, it's one of the worst places in the world to live, okay? And uh, so, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I had problems, next door neighbor, Mr. Bland, you could hear him wheezing over there at night with his windows open. I mean, he, he almost died every year. So uh, we all had problems, okay? <laughs> uh, so anyway, that, that's the health issue. My mother got me onto supplements. So when I was introduced to, uh, at 19 years old, I had some health benefits. And so it was uh, easy for me to say, yeah, I believe in these things because I had improved. Not, not totally cured, but improved. Just getting the right nutrients and getting away from my mother's southern cooking. <laughs> it almost killed me, my father. <laughs> not, it's true. My <laughs> it was uh, fried chicken, uh, chicken fried steak, uh, chicken fried gravy. Fried potatoes, <laughs> you know, homemade ice cream, you know, and uh, homemade biscuits and homemade butter. And uh, uh, I, I'm making myself hungry right now because <laughs> it's uh, part of my, part of my, <laughs> my uh, DNA and my gene pool. It just when I think of those things, I just, I got to have some of that right now, you know. <clears throat> I almost had a fit yesterday. We talked about homemade ice cream, you know, and it, wow, I think, oh, what a, I, my mother made homemade ice cream daily. <laughs> and, my, and my father demanded it. 
you know. In fact, uh, it, 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 along with that would be blueberry cobbler and peach cobbler and you name it and fried, fried apricot pies. If there's a possibility to fry anything, she did it, okay? <clears throat> My father got seriously ill and had to go to, uh, uh, he, the local doctors couldn't help him. And his, he, he was failing and they said, it's gotta be something, could, could we get him to a, a clinic? And I got him into Stanford. And uh, I'd go up to visit him and the first day I go in there and I said, how are you doing? He said, well, okay. But he said, they're about to starve me to death in here. I said, <laughs> So then I go the next day, uh, he was a little bit better. Go the next day, a little bit better. And then finally he's fine and they're starting to give him a little food and things and they'd been giving him fruit juice and whatnot. I met with his doctor and I said, what's the, what's the diagnosis? And the doctor said, well, your mother's, his diet is killing him. <laughs> and all we did was you know, stop giving him all that bad food. He told us what he eats every day. And uh, so it's totally plugged him up and everything and nothing was working, no digestive system, no anything, right? And so all they did was stop putting my mother's food in him. <laughs> <clears throat> and that cured him, okay, so. <laughs> Uh-oh, <laughs> I see. I see some people doing like this, you know, to the. <laughs> okay, let's go a little bit further now. That's the startup, but I, the message there is, is you're a founder of your company and you hear that, you know, you're independent, you're a founder of your company, start thinking of it that way and then get help. And the help, look what happens when you, if, you, if I go out looking for a, uh, a leader in the scientific advisory board capacity, I would have never picked John Miller who's cleaning the warehouse. Okay, uh, it's just not gonna happen. But, and if I would have said, John, do you know anything about, you understand nutrition? No. So if I'd been looking for someone who understood nutrition, I wouldn't be John, right? But guess what? John became an expert, you know? John is very educated today. John, I don't want to pick on you, but uh, you're so easy to pick on. Uh, <laughs> kidding, John, joke. <clears throat> so anyway, out of the people around me, okay? Just the people, ordinary people, and this is, my message yesterday was, you know, don't look for the person that's already developed and the businessman, the go-getter and all that is, uh, you know, look in your team and then create an atmosphere so that they can become what they want to become. Now, let me give you some examples. As my team, as my business grew, uh, I had some very high profile people uh, who were developing, because they were all very young. They were, when I was, uh, oh, 28 years old, 27, uh, an older guy was 37, joined my team. His name was Jim Rohn. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Jim Rohn's messages today are still, still as relevant as they, they were at that time. He was so good as a speaker, we encouraged him to become a speaker, okay? At the same time in my team was a guy, Les Brown, that I hadn't met yet, okay? <clears throat> and then Jim Rohn recruited Tony Robbins, okay? Yeah, pretty good team, right? Well, good team, for the, good team for the short term, but not for the long term. Because I created an environment that uh, they could become whatever they could become, and they become motivational speakers, <laughs> known worldwide, okay? 
In fact, Jim got so uh, developed and good and everything that I started a company called Adventures in Achievement. Bob and I, my brother, and we had a set of tapes, Jim Rohn tapes. And those tapes we sold, you remember Louie in Africa? They were, on, uh, they were on our sales aid list, Jim Rohn tapes. And uh, we have people still have those tapes today in Africa. You, who has them? Shirley has those tapes. Shirley, Shirley made this trip all the way with me, as she said, when she was a little girl, okay? <laughs> you know, she was a gorgeous little girl. Just let me say that, okay? <laughs> Working in Chicago, you know. Uh, anyway, she was right there. But anyway, this, this trip, uh, uh, w- when Jim Rohn wanted to leave, he wanted to go out and, and be a speaker, uh, at that time, I was not smart enough to keep Jim involved. Okay, I, I fumbled the ball there. And so, when I did, I, what I did, and Bob, we just said, you know, here, Jim, here's the company that we started. Here's Adventures and Achievement, uh, your tapes, everything. We didn't charge him anything. We just gave it to him. But one, because we could see he was, he was, but we thought that he would be independent out there and that we could then call him in at any time and help us. That would have been great, right? <laughs> Another one of my distributors had started a company. Okay, he was down line. It was me, it was Larry Huff, uh, who had started his own little company. I had, I had people get successful and start companies, okay? Now, I think only one, this one that I was gonna tell you about, Mark Hughes, he started Herbalife. Okay, he was successful, and he turns right around, he'd met Jim Rohn, and he hired him and paid him, and so Jim Rohn went to work for him, okay? So I call that a mistake. (laughs) That's the one that I really uh, missed uh, when when Jim uh, wasn't with us, okay? But uh, we, were all, we remained good friends uh, all, all the years until his death. So now, anyway, that's another, uh, it, you can see by this time, Jim Rohn, uh, these people, um, even Zig Ziglar signed up in my team. He didn't do anything. He was an Amway distributor. He left Amway, he joined, and, uh, but he didn't stay around. He was already on his way being a, a motivational speaker. So now, guess what? Because, here's the, here's the second lesson. Uh, these high profile superstars leaving me my, did not affect me except on the very short term. Because they left behind uh, other people that I could work with. Okay? Don't, don't ever think that you're going to keep everybody that you bring into your team. They're going to develop in other directions. They, everybody's got this little brain up there that's, that's making choices for them. And uh, it can span in any direction at any time, okay? <laughs> it can go crazy. It can, be, it can achieve sanity again. Uh, you know, I, uh, it's in the world. It's in the uh, United States of America, Mexico, Canada. It's in... Uh, The Bay Area, it's in my family, okay? (laughs) It works all the way down. You know, sometimes my family members will do things I don't understand, okay? You know, but, you know, we're still a family. And we get along and they do things, come back around and and, uh, and we we keep going. So the Neolife family started growing. We invested most of our money always back into the business. Okay, for the, ever since Kendra took over, she's been investing all the money back in the business. Kendra, when are you going to stop this nonsense? Okay. <laughs> when, when are you going to? Well, but guess what? Uh, you know, her leadership, under her leadership, she has uh, transformed the image, the look, the feel. Uh, uh, the research into the products. She's reinvigorated the scientific advisory board, new members, you know, Dr. Liz Applegate. Wasn't she fantastic, huh? 
Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I'm not, you're going to meet a new, a new person that uh, uh, is lining up to help us. And uh, to, I, won't, I won't say anything. I'll uh, let somebody else introduce. Uh, her name is Julie, okay? But uh, you're going to meet her. She's, she's in, I'm, I'm anxious to hear what she has to say. I haven't heard her speak yet, okay? But uh, anyway, so today, the Scientific Advisory Board, uh, well, as you can see, my vision was increasing along the way because uh, Larry Huff took off. He went to Australia. From Australia, I met Graham Caldwell. Graham Caldwell wanted to go to South Africa. <clears throat> the business has spread up through Africa. Uh, you know, another distributor wanted to go to, to Italy. Uh, I, I followed over there to Italy. I followed my organization. Wherever it went, I tried to, even if I was spending money, uh, all I was making, sometimes more than I was making, I tried to support that, that growth, wherever it went out there. Just follow it and support it. And that's how it spread. George Casal was a school teacher, not a businessman. He was an athlete. He was lined up to, uh, to uh, <clears throat> as an Olympic runner, to, uh, to run in the Olympics back in his day in the, in the, in the 100 yard, uh, they call it the 100 yard dash at the time. And so he, uh, <clears throat> now I think it's 100 meters, but uh, he was very fast. And, and he, was, he had actually beat the guy that eventually went and represented us because he had a torn something uh, just before he was uh, going to do it. So George was a school teacher, high school teacher, and an athlete, uh, and that's his life. He became a distributor, him and his wife, Jerry, and he still works today. This is 40, whatever, many years later. This was, I don't know, counting from 19, say 49 years, uh, George has been around. He went, so he was in New York. He built a team in New York. He's Italian, George Casali, okay. Well, uh, I said, George, why don't you go to Italy? Not as a company employee. I said, go there and build. Okay. Uh, he went there. He thought he spoke Italian, but he learned when he got there, he didn't speak very much. And <laughs> so he had to learn Italian. See, he wasn't, he, he, to communicate, he built a big team in Italy. He wasn't running the company. And then we had a, we had a, a, a guy that was up in Sweden because it has gone up there. It was a very small company, hardly any sales. And uh, that person uh, actually uh, left the company and he decided to go into the ministry. He left the company. And uh, his name was Ola, Ola Madsen. And so I said, I said, George, would you go up there for three months and help get that company sorted out and get some new management and so on? And he said, yeah. So he left Italy, took his, and he went up there by himself at first. And uh, then he finally left out of there 20 years later, okay? <laughs> See, there 20 years. He's now fluent in, in uh, Swedish, okay? Uh, he uh, is fluent in Italian. He's fluent in, in Spanish. He's fluent in, in, of course. Now, this is George, a school teacher that just kept expanding his own vision of his own. He's the founder. He then came, uh, worked for the company, brought him back here because he's so knowledgeable. He served as the CEO for a while of the company, total company. And he then said, his doctor told him, that the pressures of the CEO job was killing him. <laughs> you gotta get out of that job. George came to me and said, look, I don't wanna leave the company, but this, I can't take it, you know? And, uh, and so George was one of those guys that his, uh, if you're sitting with him at a dinner table, his, his uh, knee is bouncing up and down, he's high nervous energy, and, and George uh, worries about everything, and when you're the CEO of the company, you got a lot of things to worry about. So, uh, you know, <clears throat> it's very nice to have Kendra, you know, but Kendra is really tougher than George, okay? Really, believe me. <laughs> she handles it. <laughs> no fears. Anyway, that, that vision kept growing. We kept learning lessons. I learned to deal with people who left me. 
who didn't want to be around anymore. And uh, I, I was always hoping that whoever they had gotten into the business, I would retain some of those and be able to work with them and grow them. And, and you know something? You can talk to any of these big uh, diamond distributors, the president's team members, and they tell you the same thing, okay? It's part of the business. By the way, I have a Toyota store in San Jose, California. I invested in the auto business some 30-something years ago. And uh, it's a big store. I actually have people that buy a Toyota and then leave and then go buy a, 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 a something else later. They actually don't stay loyal to Toyota every time they buy a car. Can you, can you imagine? <laughs> okay. That's life. And that's the way it is. But you know what? Enough people stick around that we can have a convention right here uh, in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, and we can have 500 plus people in the room, and we can have a great time. And guess what? This is happening all over the world. Now, you can also expand your business as the founder of your business to do the same thing. As big as you want to build it, but you got to go through those steps that George went through you know, that Louis and Laverne have gone through, that the Gonzaleses have gone through, that, you know, everybody, everybody uh, has gone through. You got to go through those things uh, and uh, that I went through and I'm still going through. I, I'm going to be here as long as I have the health. Uh, God gives me the health and, and, uh, and my, my mind stays uh, uh, somewhat uh, normal. Uh, I'll be here, okay? because this is what I like to do. Have a good day. God bless. Okay. <laughs>